Okay, I know that the Percy Jackson series just aired two episodes tonight. So why am I talking about the Percy Jackson movies? Well, before we can move forward, we must look at our past. One must look at one's past mistakes so you can learn to do better in the future. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm just talking nonsense. I guess I was just excited for the series that I decided to watch the two movies. Come on guys, it wasn't that bad. And actually, that's what I wanted to talk about. How the Percy Jackson movies weren't that bad. Something good came out of it, and that's actually what we're going to discuss in this video. And I guess you already knew this from the title and thumbnail, but let me introduce myself for those of you who are new to this channel. Hi, I'm Zidney, and these are Good Things That Came From The Percy Jackson Movies. Chapter 1 The movies weren't that bad, especially the first one. Like I said earlier, the movies weren't so bad. Independent from the books, the Percy Jackson movies are actually good. How dare I say that, right? Okay, confession time. I'm not one of those Percy Jackson fans who read the books first and then anticipated the film adaptation. I actually watched the movies first. I'll expound more on that later. But in all honesty, if you've never read the books, if you have nothing to compare the movies to, they really hold up. My aunt was the one who introduced me to Percy Jackson. She suggested that I watch it, and I'm glad that she did because I absolutely loved it. Even though the second movie, Sea of Monsters, felt rushed and triggered my thalassophobia, The Lightning Thief was quite enjoyable, especially if you've never read the books. And if you don't agree with me and you absolutely hate the movies, it's fine. At least it's not like the last Airbender film adaptation. Oops. Chapter 2 Logan Lerman, White Boy of the Month slash century. The second good thing that came out of the movies is Logan Lerman. I think a lot of people would agree. Logan Lerman is such an amazing cast for Percy. Perfect? No. But amazing? Yes, definitely. Sure, his age isn't exactly the same as the books. But I know that many fans still love Logan because I've seen people make videos and memes where they use Logan as Percy, just with the appropriate age for each book. So we definitely agree that Logan looks like Percy, just Percy Jackson in The Last Olympian. Plus again, it's Logan Lerman. Logan is such a fantastic actor. He's actually one of my celebrity crushes. So Logan could play in whatever movie he wants and I'd still watch him. I absolutely love him in Perks of Being a Wallflower. I also read the books by the way. Logan Lerman so loved that he became the first white boy of the month. And he is still stealing hearts. Sure, he's not the perfect cast. He's not a Percy Jackson reader like Walker. Like, I've read this book like <laughs> over seven times. He didn't get the blue food reference. And I like random questions. Do you guys like blue food? But hey, I'm still thankful for Logan for being the first movie face of Percy. Not a bad face for Percy. Honorable mention to Alexandra Daddario. My sister and I always call her Annabeth in whatever movie she plays. We also try to watch her movies. Chapter 3 They Made Me Read the Books As I've already said, I wasn't one of those Percy Jackson fans who read the books first. So of course, I absolutely enjoyed The Lightning Thief. Sea of Monsters was just okay. The ending was a mess even when I didn't read the books back then. But when The Sea of Monsters ended with a cliffhanger, I was still ready to watch the third installment. Coincidentally, Titan's Curse became my favorite after reading the five books. However, I found out that they weren't going to create more. That must have been good news to Percy Jackson readers because the film adaptations were terrible. But to me, I was devastated. But good news! Because I really wanted to know what would happen next, I started to read the books. And I have become a fan ever since, even reading until Heroes of Olympus and up until The Trials of Apollo. By the way, my godly parent is Apollo. Who's yours? Please comment who your godly parent is and why. I would love to read them. Anyway, I even read Rick Riordan's other books on other mythology, like the Egyptian mythology-centered Cain Chronicles and the Norse mythology-focused Magnus Chase. 
So even though the Percy Jackson film adaptations weren't so great, I'm thankful that they got made because they were the ones who introduced me to a whole new world of gods and goddesses. Chapter 4 Their death brought about the birth of the series. However, when I finally read the Percy Jackson books, I started to understand the hatred towards the film adaptations. I understand that books and films are two different mediums and you can't exactly expect for the film to adapt a play-by-play -play of the books. But the Percy Jackson films were really different from the books. First, the age appropriateness. Percy and his friends are 12 in the book, aging with each entry until they reach 16 in the final book of the series. However, the movie starts with Percy at 17. This is actually a problem because the very important prophecy in the series talks about a child of one of the big three, Zeus, Poseidon, and Hades, making a decision that will either destroy the world or save it when he or she reaches 16. Next, the story was also quite different. In The Lightning Thief, instead of trekking across the country to find Zeus's lightning bolt, fighting all these monsters and doing Ares a favor. Percy, Annabeth, and Grover go on a simpler quest to find Persephone's pearls. And in the second movie, Sea of Monsters, changing the story really took a toll. The main villain of the series, Kronos, suddenly becomes the main villain in the second film. And Percy defeats him too quickly in the Sea of Monsters. This honestly killed the franchise because Cronus rising up from the dead was the big event throughout the series. So when Percy already defeated the risen Cronus in the second film, there was no point in making the other movies. They could have done what they did to the Harry Potter movie franchise with Percy starting at 12 and then we see him grow up in each film. But they did not do that. Oh, sorry, I started to ramble. Anyway, because the two Percy Jackson movies weren't successful, the film franchise died. But that's okay, because their death brought about the birth of the new and better Percy Jackson series, one that is closely monitored by Rick Riordan himself. To conclude, I just want to say that I'm still thankful for the Percy Jackson movies, because again, they weren't so bad. They introduced us Logan Lerman. They made me read the books. And finally, without them, we wouldn't have the series today. And I would take a series over a film franchise any day. So let's give them some love. But I'm really excited for the series. So why are you still watching this video? Let's go watch the Percy Jackson series on Disney+. Plus. <laughs>